Hey everybody, we're here to address um, one of uh, the most popular bugbears and gripes in chess. Uh, no, we're not talking about the Nelson bot, we are talking about the bloody London system. So um, it's, it's hell of annoying and uh, today I'm, I'm going to show you, it's, it's not a, an anti-London system system, but if you have problems with this bloody system, then uh, I'll at least give you a starting point. Okay, so um, if I look at my games as black, for example, the bloody London system starts with uh, d5, and then invariably white's going to play the accelerated London with the bishop out here. The, the old London, old London town, was uh, knight to f3 first, and then, then the bishop out here, but this is the accelerated London system, which is played by apparently almost everyone around the 1000 bracket. Um, now, I have to say, there's nothing wrong with the bloody London system. Um, Carlson's played the bloody thing. Loads of, um, you know, it's, it's still played at every level in chess. It's very solid. It's just dull. And it's just like it's too common and it's an annoyance. So, um, how do I suggest you play? Well, we're looking at my stats here. And as black... I've had the most success with the move d6. Now, that takes us into Philidor Black Lion territory. So this is all my games on chess.com. So that's probably from my time playing the Black Lion, which is a bit surprising. And to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised about it myself. Um, so with f I've had 54% success rate with that. 50% um, success rate with f5 which is the Dutch, um, but I've since kind of walked away from that one. Uh, F6, I've played it like three times and, and won twice as black. But uh, and then F5, F5 we've, we've looked at, and um, then the second move. So the most common move I, I've ever played is D5, right? But D5, you can get into all kinds of things, most likely the bloody London system. But the move I'm going to suggest is the second most popular move that I've played, which is knight f6. Now, you're more likely to get more d5s at lower levels and more knight f6 is as you go up. Now, I've had, out of 464 games, 51% win rate with knight f6, a few draws and 48% to white. Okay, so knight f6. And now, you get into... you. Obviously, lots and lots of ways, but knight f6 is a really, really flexible move. You are developing a piece, one of the minor pieces from your kingside, one of the two that you have to shift if you're going to castle kingside, which is the quickest way to castle, because if you go long, you've got one, two, three pieces that you have to move, right? And a pawn in order to release the bishop, as we know. Now, the most popular moves here that I've faced are c4. Now, c4 will then get you into... You, all kinds of ways you can push e6, you can push g6, Fianchetto the bishop, right? There's all kinds of options. You can go Benoni, you can go Budapest Gambit, whatever you whatever you like, right? Um, and you could play Grunfeld, for example. There's lots of different things that, that you could do. Now, um, that is the most common response that I've faced with uh, 188. So, um, even actually, the move c5 here, the Benoni, is, is very playable. So you could actually play these first two moves always, because this is what I'm suggesting. First knight to f6, and then pretty much c, c5 on move two. Okay, but what if they play the bloody London system? Don't throw bloody bishops at me. Right, so here, look at this. Check, check this out, right? d6, I've played a bunch of d6s. Yeah, it's kind of solid. And I've won 47%. When I've played c5, on the other hand, 57% win rate against 38 for white. Now, that's over 40 games, So, but it's not bad. And the point is, the whole point is, if I flip the board around, what white wants to do is always the same bloody thing, right? Wants to put all his stuff here, as shown, and then he's going to castle, and then he's going to think about playing chess at some point later on in the game, right? And it's just, it's just tedious. So what we do with this move is we already threaten to trash 
the White's sacred pyramid of power, right? And White hates it. So let me flip over to the analysis board on Leeches and let's check it out from the Leeches perspective, right? White plays d4. We play knight to f6 to see which way White's going to go. Now I've got this set, I have to show you, I've got this set at the full range uh, blitz and rapid, okay? And here, across the full range now, you can see c4 becomes far more common with 10 million games, right, playing c4. The second most common is actually knight f3, and bishop b4 comes in third here with only 12.9% of games. Now, if they play this, look, look at what we have, right? We've got g6, like the king's Indian, okay? We've got e6, which is, what is that called? This still says Indian here. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that much of a... Okay. But this is against the London system. It's already calling it the London system. But yeah, I, f I forget this, this setup. Um, so g6 is number one. e6 is number two. d5 is number three, right? And they get 47, 45, and 46 for black. Then you've got d6 with 47%. And then boom! c5 wins 50% of the time. Right. From what it looks like, it's the only move to option that on average, it has to be said, if you play like a complete dickhead, you're still going to lose. Right? It doesn't guarantee you a win. It guarantees you this lightest edge possibly. Right, 50% um, against 44. And I think it's there's a couple of others that kind of equalize, but this is the only move that gives black better results in the wild. Now, I've actually been through all of these and check it at 1600 look c5 gets 51 percent right at 1800 c5 52 percent it's getting stronger right at 2000 on lee chess 51 percent again gets 43 for white this is just it and all the way up until 2500 right look at this c5 again 48 against 44 so it's starting to narrow out okay at the 2200 range and at 2,500, C5 is 44 for black, 46 for white. And you're getting more, more draws, obviously, at that level because people get better at the end game and so on. Um, but even, even at the top level, very, very playable. This is the point. So what I'm going to do is let me show you a game where an opponent rated in the 1800s on Lee Chess played the bloody London system against me and uh, came rapidly unstuck. So we'll go through it. D4, knight to f6, depends. And also the nice thing about this move obviously is it, is it stops that, okay, stops e4. Now, opponent plays the bloody London system with bishop to f4, and I go, uh, by the way, this is a, I think a 10 minute rapid. You, it, the clocks are showing the, the final um, clocks, right, which is my opponent's still got 8 minutes on the clock and I've got 8 minutes 17, so that gives you an idea about how long this game is. Okay, I play C5, the anti-London, and I know that I know that Levy Rosman has recommended this, I think probably Eric Rosen has as well, but this is for good reason. Okay, so this is the way I'm always going to go against the bloody London system, right? Now, in the game White plays C3 which kind of makes sense. He's, he's, you see this quite a lot in the Sicilian. So this is a bit like a Sicilian, right? Um, because apart from there's no, there's no pawn out here. But the um, White's trying to replace his central pawn, if it should be taken, with, a, with his, his, his C pawn, his D pawn's wing pawn, right? So now we don't want to start exchanging stuff off and simplifying in the middle of the board, right? So knight to c6, nice thing about this is it puts a second attacker on there and it controls the center. So now I've got both knights out. Uh, another opening I'm, I'm looking at, by the way, against d4, while we're here, um, if white should play the most common response, as we've seen, not bishop out here, but if white plays, let's go back here, 
if white plays, you can still play knight, knight out here as well, actually, as well, um, which is known as the Black Knight's Tango, and that's an opening that I'm starting to look into as well. But anyway, I digress. Um, here we go, and knight out. White now takes there. I don't think that's a fantastic idea. For one thing, the moment my e-pawn moves, this pawn is a sitting duck. Or is he going to play b4 and give himself a very awkward pawn structure on the queen side? Okay, now I'm not interested in, in pawns and stuff like that. I'm interested in activity. And here you get the other reason. Now that that pawn has moved, okay, it's no longer guarding e5. So I can push e5 with tempo, hit the bishop, and what's more, attack this pawn. So what's white going to do? White's going to drop his bishop back to e3, where he defends the pawn. Okay, but I've made him something he doesn't made him do something he doesn't want to do. What he didn't want to do is to block in this e pawn, because the e pawn blocks in both the queen and the light squared bishop, right? So he's up a pawn at this point, but I'm up in development. I've got a pawn in the middle. He hasn't. I've got two minor pieces development. He hasn't, right? I'm looking at his favorite pawn. The only central pawn that he's developed so far, right? So now, just tactics, tic tacs and tactics, right? I'm looking to take out the bishop, give him horrible doubled and isolated pawns on the e-file, and then take his pawn, so I haven't even lost the pawn. And so now, he does something else he doesn't really want to do, which is to push b4. I don't think he should have done this. I think he should have kept his pawn there. I think he should have developed stuff instead, right? Um, in fact, I think even dropping this bishop back was probably an error. Probably. He could have just dropped it back to there and carried on and like reset and then start over with his development. This is just nasty, right? So, what do I do? Take out the bishop. Doubled, isolated pawns on the e-file. Three pawn islands, one of which is like an archipelago. Look it up. If you, you know... It's still at school. In fact, if you're still at school, you shouldn't be watching my videos anyway. Um, all right, so and now d5. d5, I'm striking out for the center. Another thing I want to do is to stop these pawns, right? I want to block them off. I want to make it really hard for him to get his bishop out to d5. And I'm, I'm teasing him. I'm saying, go on, capture en passant. Capture en passant. I dare you. I double dare you, right? Yeah, he doesn't, because finally he decides, actually, I think, rather than scattering my pawns all over the chess hall, I should probably think about maybe getting my king safe and maybe getting castled, uh, but at the very least I should develop. So, uh, his attack in this pawn, it's, developed, it's protected, it's all right. So, I just push on. Push on, and now these pawns are in a complete bind, right? They cannot move forward, I've got them. Um, this bishop's looking horrible, this queen's got reduced options, and I'm attacking his knight, and it comes with tempo. So what's he going to do? Can't go there because queen takes. Boom. Can't go there because queen takes. Boom. Can't go there because knight takes. Kazam. Right, so he's got to go either back there, which is just horrible, or he's going to go here into the middle of the board and pray that I capture with my knight that I'm having a, a, a random moment allowing to undouble one of his double sets of pawns. He goes there, I go, nah, mate, not on your Nelly. I'm going now to play g6, and I'm going to fianca to my bishop, and I'm going to castle my king. Okay? Now the queen comes out. But look at, see, his queen can't go there. And that's just rubbish. I mean, queen, you know, the queen is left with only this. I mean, is that the best you've got? You see? This is terrible. Yes, he's pinned my knight. So he actually has two attackers on this knight versus only one defender. So, bishop d7, right? And now, I'm not only adding a second defender to my knight, but I now also have a threat of my own, which is knight takes d4. And my opponent misses it, right? This, we're not in London anymore, right? Toto. He's not in London. He doesn't know what the fucking hell's going on. He's out of his element. Danny, shut it. You're out of your element. Okay? So I capture the knight with a discovery against the queen. Um, and he, he goes there. So now, what else do I have? C2 is now free as well. 
yeah, he's with this tension between the queens, so let's first just remove the queen and give him, for good measure, a fourth pawn island, no less, and a third set of double pawns. And now what he should do is take my knight. Oh no, because no, he recaptured. Okay, now I play knight c2 with a fork on the king and the rook, and opponent here resigns. Right, he's already down a piece for a pawn. He's about to lose a rook as well. And look at the pawns from hell. Okay, and that, my friends, is one way to, to beat the London system. So I will be putting together an anti-London study of my own and uh, check it out. So, you know, you can always go to my studies. Uh, the link is now in, in the description of all of my videos. So just go on to my Leecher studies and have a browse and uh, knock yourself out. But if you face the bloody London system, right, that is how to defeat it, yeah? Nice. Okay, and that's it. Well, I mean, obviously, don't defeat it every time. You've still got to play good chess. But, yeah, I did nothing special in that game. It just went all Pete Tong for my opponent very quickly. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.